الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد so there is an abundance of blessings in taking the sahur having breakfast before one begins to fast from water and dates and things uh, like that whatever one requires for their breakfast to take this there is great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before fasting and another benefit of the suhoor is that it by taking suhoor it's also it differs the Islamic fast from the fasting of the Jews and the Christians and other uh, religious groups and communities so in Islam it is recommended as was uh, the statement of many of the classical scholars like Ibn Mandar and uh, Ibn Qudama that both of them they related that it was a ijma of ahl ilm ala istihbaba suhoor that the consensus of the scholars is that it is recommended to have suhoor and as was narrated in the hadith when Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تستحروا فإن في سحور بركة متفق عليه. So in this hadith of Anas ibn Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه who said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that take the suhoor you know have the breakfast because verily in the breakfast is baraka is blessing and this is agreed upon in Bukhari and Muslim and what we learn from this hadith narration and other hadith a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, is as we mentioned before that by taking the suhoor you differ with the other religious communities and distinguish the Islamic fast from their fasts another benefit we derive from this hadith is that there is blessings in taking suhoor so you actually receive reward from your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala by taking breakfast and some of the wisdom behind that is because when you take suhoor is that it gives you strength and energy for your fasting and your acts of worship you're able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better by actually having some of that sustenance to help sustain you throughout your day while you're fasting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to attain taqwa trying to attain God fearfulness also the suhoor and the fasting it protects one from the from evil mannerisms that can be a result can be a result of being excessively hungry another benefit we derive from this hadith is that there's blessings the blessings in the suhoor also assist a person with making especially for the men making the uh, morning prayer the fajr prayer in the masjid in jama'ah in, the, in the, the group prayer because if an individual gets up for the suhoor they get up and they're taking their breakfast before the time for fasting then they're up in time for the prayer and it makes it easier for the people to do so another benefit we derive from this hadith is that in another narration that Imam Al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala declared his sound in his Silsila Sahiha from the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu marfu'an where he said ni'm suhoor al-mu'min at-timr that the most blessed or favored suhoor is to take dates so it shows us that dates is also recommended for us to take as uh, sustenance, to break our fast and to begin our fast. Another blessing, uh, another uh, faida or benefit that we derive from this hadith is that along with the uh, blessings of the suhoor, that it also shows us that in the in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation that some 
things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created has blessings in and of itself. That it has blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in it. it has, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in barakah in having suhoor. As the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith that tasharu fa inna fi suhoor barakah. Because verily in the suhoor there is blessing. So this lets us know that there is blessing in some of the creation, some of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that for us to enjoy. And an, another benefit uh, that Shaykh uh, Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned is that <coughs> when taking the suhoor that, that this is also this hadith is also evidence that there is blessings in, many, uh, in, in some of the things in the creation for example he mentioned that the person uh, that anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has put blessings in or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put blessings in those things which gives you furthers your strength and furthers, uh, gives benefit to people, and, and so forth, and helps uh, people gain uh, blessings. That these things have blessings in it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, a scholar or a student of knowledge, also there is barakah if people benefit from his or her knowledge. Because with this, uh, if it helps them either by their manners or their, their general actions and their knowledge that these things are a blessing for the community and blessings for Muslims. Also, if something is a benefits your, your body or it benefits you in manners or it benefits you, uh, there can also be barakah in a person's wealth. If they spend it in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, supporting good charitable causes and in positive things that bring about positive results, then this is blessed. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting and to bless us to gain blessings. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad.